What thing did you research way too much for just a throwaway line that pretty much no normal person would notice in your fanfiction? I'm currently researching all about ancient wine, and particularly Roman wine. How it was made, how the Romans drank it, what it was stored and served in. All so I can have a time traveler character be disappointed that the wine sucked. I just want to make sure that it sucks in a historically accurate way. So, what are your stories of researching something that you knew wasn't going to be major, but you went in deep anyway? Maybe you're currently researching something just like me. Tell me about it. I dug into the history of the penguin who was a ceremonial officer in the Norwegian King's Guard. So when I had him make a cameo as a minor character, I had his rank correct for the date that the fic was set. No idea if that's something anyone who's read it would have noticed or cared about, but I cared. Which Latin American countries make empanadas with pineapple, and which ones don't? I found out that pineapple empanadas are a thing in Mexico, but not in the Dominican Republic. Or at least not as much. Which lined up perfectly with something else that I was planning on anyway. The Secret Service. When they pick codenames for the president, vice president, and others they protect, they use the same first letter for all members of the family. My question... Is it alphabetical or phonetic? I wanted to give the president the codename Phoenix. Would the rest of his family get codenames starting with F or P? I literally just looked up how phone numbers are formatted in Japan so I could make an extension for a fake email signature. A fake email signature. I did a bunch of research into synthetic hair and how different types would stand up to heat before eventually saying, forget it and giving the character a real hair wig. It was only mentioned in a single line. I used Google Maps to look for an apartment for the hero and see if there was a church nearby, and then went to the church website to find out if there was a bell tower there, just for the sake of the phrase that the hero woke up to the ringing of bells. Medieval Welsh Dental Hygiene According to a Cambro Norman monk, Gerald, they used hazel twigs and wool and were known for their white teeth. Whether primitive Dark Age folks living in a European-type climate make boots from animal skin. Spoiler? It depends. Which, if any, present-day shipping conglomerates had an existing subsidiary in the 1860s for my immortal main character to sell his family's company to, as a way to explain how he can afford such rich tastes for a middle-aged civil servant in the present day. I spent four hours yesterday watching an A&E documentary on serial killers and another YouTube video about hired assassins and killers, just to learn how they think so I can write an interrogation scene. For me, it's medical stuff. I always try to make any medical recovery last around what it should in real life. Given I work in medical research, it really bugs me when TV gets it all wrong. I did a lot of research on what you're supposed to do for a snake bite for what is essentially a five-line bickering argument another character overhears his friends having. I did really extensive research for like a day on bridges for a Spider-Man fic to write like three words. I read a complete Shakespeare tragedy when I initially was only looking for a specific quote of said work. What kind of baths people used in a specific period of time and exactly how they warmed their water. I went on a tangent and read about it all freaking day, only to ignore everything I read and use my own version anyway. Natural gas-powered appliances of the early 1900s. For an Encanto fic to explain how antique coffee makers and old movie projection equipment could have worked in a near-completely isolated mountain community. Not for posted fic, but rather a roleplay which I wrote private fics for, but I studied up on beekeeping without really realizing to make the plot and characterization more believable. Which is funny, cause now, many years later, I ended up being a beekeeper myself. Medieval grist mills. Millstones were heavy and dangerous. If a millstone fell and killed someone, it was retired permanently. Sometimes it became the person's gravestone, but other times it was placed in front of the mill so people would walk on it. The highest quality millstones came from France. For a Pokemon fic, damage calculations on the odds a Pikachu could one-shot a Raichu with Iron Tail. The fic runs on anime logic, so it doesn't really matter one bit, but I wanted to know if it could be done in the games. The answer was that with neutral natures and 126 attack EVs, a crit Iron Tail has a 12.5% chance of a one-shot if Pikachu holds a light ball and outlevels Raichu 88 to 66. Good enough. I learned how to play the game Sabacc in Star Wars just so I could reference the gameplay accurately in an E-rated Boba Fett fic. 
I made a road trip fix set in the 60s, but the characters didn't have a car. Greyhound buses. Where they had bus stops in the 60s, what said bus stops looked like, the exchange rate for money, with inflation, exactly how much time they would have in each place. I basically know everything about Greyhounds now. I researched the feasibility and routes one would take between California coast and Arizona, assuming there were no roads and they had to take a detour. I ended up finding some random off-road trail enthusiast website that had entire routes, etc., which is super helpful, but that took way too long for something that a side character was doing for about three to four lines max. How scientists live in the Arctic. Overall, very fascinating, even if it wasn't very important at all. Landmarks on Mount Everest. More specifically, the frozen corpses littered about. I straight up spent three hours looking at a whole Wikipedia article just to have a character make a grim joke. Video game currency conversions. Apparently, salt costs a dollar, a sword costs 500, and a soup recipe is 2,000 freaking dollars. Jesus freaking Christ, that soup must be delicious. Naval losses in the War of 1812. For literally one line where a character is reading some news out loud to make conversation completely irrelevant to the plot. Boy, let me tell you, I am completely nautically incompetent, so my first mistake was deciding to write ship girl fic. But one time I needed to have a character give a direction to send the boat in, so I spent two hours researching bearing, heading, and relative direction. It took so long because ADHD, and I'm slow to understand that kind of stuff, only for the line to end up being... Helm, make our course north-northeast, heading 036. All engines full ahead, he ordered. Course 036, all engines ahead full, I. Hey, those lines give a great setting flavor. It has an impact. Ancient Egyptian cuisine, with attempts to look specifically into the 18th dynasty era. One at random. I researched how injuries caused by pressure on the throat work so my character could have a realistic description, and later realistic first aid, after someone tried to crush their windpipe. But in the end, I realized that the severity of the injury was too much for the scene, which already had a lot going on, so almost the entire thing was cut from the final version of the chapter, leaving only a fragment of just-in-case type first aid for a much smaller injury. The exact sequence of trains and underground stations to get from Oxford to a certain neighborhood in London on a Saturday morning in September 1983. Plus also the cost. After first spending a couple of hours to define that neighborhood by relative cost slash coolness. In the end, I did confirm my characters could be soaked through and freezing cold by the time they reached their destination. Male college freshers, second weekend of uni, who ought to know to watch the weather report the night before or check the newspaper that morning or just to take a rain jacket regardless. But this is the point each character learned that every adult who ever told them to do these things was, um, not wrong. Well, the night before last, I ended up on a multi-hour binge on researching regional slang and dialects because I thought I might give a throwaway original character some kind of slightly different speech pattern from the other characters. I ended up not using anything I found, but I sure learned a lot of new slang. And had the funny realization that I say egg like egg instead of egg. It may not be a throwaway line if I use it again, undecided, but I spent three days researching how to safely remove an arrowhead and how Vikings would have treated said wound. This led me down a massive rabbit hole and I don't regret it. Victoria era England medical practices and cadaver thievery at the time. That stuff is wild. What kind of desserts were sold at Camden Market in 2017 so I could write what the characters were eating? It didn't need to be so specific, but I did it anyway. I was looking into cocktail mixes and bitters because my point of view character is a bartender. I also read up on some game lore just to see if there were any indications as to what the tastes of some of the ingredients I might include were. I ended up looking into it for approximately 45 minutes, but ended up scrapping the line. I settled on a specific cocktail with specific bitters made from one of the in-game collectibles, but I read through the entire thing and decided that it was too clunky, so I cut it out. Amazing use of my time! 100,000 out of 10. Will not be doing that again, but most likely will. Common exports of South Korea, so I could give an original character an intentionally very boring job in marketing that would involve travel to the US a lot. I also looked up common Korean women's names from a specific year. That fic isn't even posted anywhere, because I never finished it. 
The weather on a summer day over 20 years ago, and just to get a comment on the temperature right. I have done that exact research, but I needed autumn rain. In the end, I decided to be much less specific about the date. September in London can vary wildly. The weather on a specific random day in Virginia in the 1780s. Thankfully, Mr. George, I am totally an ordinary civilian now Washington, kept a very detailed journey about the day-to-day -day on his farm, including the weather. Whether or not it gets humid in Virginia in the summer. As someone who grew up in Virginia, yes, yes it does. Extremely so. I would have definitely noticed a lack of humidity in a fix set in summertime Virginia. For one of my fix on ancient Rome, I read something that said bakers were quite affluent there swore out loud, and rewrote the part with the destitute baker in case someone noticed. I also looked up all the expressions a baboon could realistically make, so the baboon character didn't make one he couldn't. And I looked up the phase of the moon on October 26th, 1962, so when the characters looked up it was correct. It wasn't a very dramatic phase of the moon, but my head insisted people would demand accuracy. And are those shadows attacking Charles Darwin from a place shadows could realistically be in his study, according to this reconstructed diagram? Where patches go on varsity jackets, and what each patch should mean, and in what location they have to be in. Apparently it is very specific. For an alternate universe pick, I doubt anyone would notice if it wasn't correct, but when designing the characters' outfits, I wanted to make sure they were accurate. For your information, there is always at least one person who will notice that line and enjoy the accuracy. Source, I love that stuff. Thank you to my Patreon members, my little ruse, Seltzer Fountain Man, Kuski55, Logan, Fallen Vexen, Sam, Puff, I Am A Noodle, and John Huang. Thank you so, so much for your extra support. It means the world to me. You guys are really awesome and I'm glad you're here. And the same goes to my mini ruse, my YouTube channel members, AD and Taylor Thompson. Again, thank you for your extra support, and you guys are amazing. And of course, thank you to everyone else for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Tell me, what have you, in a sense, over-researched for just the tiniest bit of a story? I definitely went over-accurate on weather in something recently. I looked up whether it was snowing in New York City on a very specific day. And it was! Again, thank you for watching. I hope you have an awesome day and I will see you in the next video.